Ugh. Okay, that's nope. So today we are going to dive even further into the create mod, but first there's several things that I really want to get done. Uh, and then I also have this guy right over here. Let's go ahead and talk to this, uh, what is his name, Elden? <laughs> hey bud, um, I should be able to trade for this map. It seems like this guy is going to be the main source of maps. And this is a pillager fortress map, which sounds crazy, but yes, this right here is going to be how we locate a lot of these places and this one seems really far away judging by how tiny our little dot is in the top right now my goal for today is to get into the create mod like i was talking about get started uh we've already got our water wheels sort of up and running but i want to be able to use the create today to sort of replace our respirator that's on my face right now and i should be able to do that with a back tank. Now to make life a little bit easier, I've organized that toolbox that we found last episode, and I have set in here a very specific format. We have in this toolbox, which we'll be able to have multiple tool toolboxes later on, but in this toolbox is, I have cogwheels on the right, large cogwheels on the left, and the shafts in the middle. These are really, really commonly used, so I have them in here, and then I also have my vertical, and I have a couple of normal gearboxes in the center. So this is basically like my uh, my rotational energy box. And then I have some encased chain drives in here, and then I have some regular casings, and for now, I had a slot for one of my manual operations. Um, and uh, yeah, which is the hand crank. Now, uh, the cool part about this box is I can just pick it up, but the other cool part is I can actually hold down Alt, and this is where you can use the range of it. And you can see, if I had any of these materials in my inventory, I can quickly clear my inventory by just clicking the return items to toolbox. And what, what's really, really cool is whenever I'm in this menu, I can just pull, for example, these out. And then when I'm done, I can just put them back in by just holding alt and clicking in the middle. That is the fantastic part about this. So we can just rotate through all of the individual items right here that are in this. And bam, we are done. Like it is so convenient to use these toolboxes. It's gonna be very helpful. So let's go ahead and create the back tank, the, the helmet, and also the diving boots. These are all really, really cool items. Um, the, the thing that's the most interesting though is the back tank, as that's going to allow us to breathe um, underwater, for one. We can breathe underwater with this, but we're also going to be able to bypass our respirator, um, which yeah, I would prefer so I don't have to craft them over and over again. Uh, the cool part about the diving boots is whenever you walk on belts and create, you're actually not going to be moved by the belts so long as you're wearing these, uh, these, these diving boots. And the helmet is going to help make sure that we can, you know, use the back tank underwater. So let's go ahead and take off our rebreather or respirator because we don't need that anymore. And now we should be able to equip our gear. And this is what it looks like. And uh, it does give us a little bit of armor. The back tank does have four armor, two and two on the, uh, the helmet and one and one on the boots. So not the best armor in the world. Uh, but we can also combine it with some pants. So if I make some iron pants, that should give us a pretty decent uh, amount of gear. I wish there was some copper pants, but unfortunately we don't have copper pants to go with it. So we're stuck looking like this. Oh, and, and by the way, the helmet, uh, let me just turn that on. And this is actually what the helmet looks like when it's enabled. Oh, that is kind of cool. And it also has a respirator on the front. Now charging this back tank, well, that's where we need that rotational energy. And right here, we have this spinning very, very slow. So we can actually speed this up. And to do this, we are going to need some cogs, large cogs, and then I also recommend having just one casing. So let's go ahead and do what's called gear ratioing. And uh, we're gonna start with a small or a large cog and we'll place the large cog right on here. We're gonna see that is now spinning. If we put a small cog on the side of that, ah, we're now shifting gears. We've now essentially sped up the rotation and we can rinse and repeat this. So if I put a cog here and then put another small cog right here, oh, well, we notice that doesn't work, but we can get around this by putting a andesite casing on here. And whenever we put an andesite casing on there, then I can place it on there. 
And now we have just essentially, I think, tripled the speed of the water wheel. And we can continue doing this. So we can place it here, and then we can put another casing on this one, and put that one there. And now this is spinning pretty fast. It's still not amazingly fast, but it is pretty fast. Now, after a couple of times of doing this, we get this very interesting monstrosity starting to build off the side, which is very steampunk in my opinion. This mod has always been sort of that way, uh, but we can keep going. We can take it even faster. So this right here is pretty quick. I believe it can go even faster than this, but I think this rotation is plenty to fill our back tank. So let's go ahead and store all of our stuff and I want to grab out a vertical gearbox. So if I take this vertical gearbox, I can then put my back tank on this. So the back tank, if we take a look at it, it has a knob on the top. And that's kind of important because that knob is what's going to charge. So if we put it onto the bottom here, that is then going to start building up pressure. And that's exactly what we want. We want to be able to see it. And in the top left, you can see its charge rate happening and it will fill up to 15. So now we've we've gotten into a pneumatic kind of mod. We've turned our rotation into pressure building. Um, but yes, this thing is pretty ugly in its current uh, form. I think even adding some logs to this would make it look a little bit nicer. Later on, there are better ways of actually uh, ratioing up that just takes place in literally two block spaces. And then you can control it as much as you want. Basically like magic. Um, but yes, for now, giving this some sort of frame where it looks like it's being held up would be nice. But there it goes. It's done. And now we have a charged backpack. And we can just right-click this to auto-equip it. And uh, we can see that uh, we now have some pressure. And so we should be able to go, for example, underwater. And that should keep us kind of oxygen oxygenized, <laughs> if that's the word for it. I just got to go underwater here and kind of test it out. Also, we walk on the bottom with these boots. It just forces us to the, the bottom of the ocean. So it's almost like we're in the overworld. We're a little bit floaty. And you can see we have 14 minutes of breath. Ah, there it goes. Perfect. 14 minutes of breathing. And we literally get to walk on the bottom of the ocean. Now you can always take your boots off if you want to just swim as normal. Another cool thing about being on the ground like this with our boots and stuff is we can break blocks like we have Aqua Affinity. Oh, which is fantastic. Now for the ultimate test, going below Y level zero. So as soon as we're down here, I believe our timer should kick back on. So we're now down below here technically, but I don't know if this is going to show similar to us being in water, but supposedly it's supposed to work in the same way. And so now, yeah, we are able to comfortably breathe down here and uh, so long as we have our back tank on. Now, later on, we'll be able to upgrade this to a netherite version once we get a hold of netherite. And that's going to be fantastic, giving us increased armor, which is going to be the thing we're sacrificing. So interesting. I did a little bit of testing, and it does turn out that when you are down below Y level zero, it does take off the time. You just can't actively see the time decreasing. So you still have 15 minutes. So it might be good to maybe make a couple of these back tanks if you plan on going on long mining expeditions. And we also need to find an ocean today to get further into the create mod. And to be able to find one, the nature's compass is going to be our best friend. And uh, this will allow me to search, for example, for an ocean biome. So if I search for cold ocean, just deep ocean, any of these oceans, typically regular ocean is just fine we should be able to locate one. And it looks like there is one about 900 blocks away, but you can also search for these at different Y levels. Uh, hello, I think this is a supplementaries, yeah. Supplementaries trader. Hello, we can get fireworks, we can buy some TNT, there's a fireworks star, some gunpowder, some rope. I don't really need anything from you today, but maybe later. All right, so let's see if we can search for this again. Let's try warm ocean, because those are usually going to contain um, the coral. And so I would, yeah, it looks like it's off in this direction. Seems like all of the oceans are going to be off in this direction. It's about a thousand blocks. So that means let's get our back tank and uh, let's go ahead and get ourselves a boat. All right. And so I'm off. We should be able to take our steed. Now, I need to come up with a name for our steed here. I feel like we're going to be using this 
quite a lot using our little friend here. So uh, maybe you guys can come up with a name for our horse this go around. No, let me know down in the comments below and I will pick the top comment of this video. And in a few episodes, I will definitely have a name tag and be able to rename our fantastic horse. And it shouldn't die. We should be fine. So I hope. This is definitely a very warm biome that we're in. And hopefully our horse doesn't uh, isn't affected by it. There's a snake down there. Oh, I'm going to be careful and not step on a nope rope. Um, but yeah, there's a structure off in the distance here as we're working our way towards the ocean, which does appear to possibly connect into this river. But this looks interesting. I wonder if this is villagers or pillagers. I have no idea, but there's a lot of cactus over here and it is incredibly hot right here oh my god okay that's nope that's a no <laughs> that's an absolute nope there are rushers oh my gosh there's rushers coming after me oh, that is a lot of pillagers okay i'm gonna say we're gonna try our best to nope our way out of this situation yeah i feel like that's the best uh best solution i think i've lost them thankfully there are more structures around, such as this one over here. And there's a bridge. Very interesting. This is starting to seem less and less like an ocean, <laughs> but this is kind of an oasis here. Ah, yes, it's another one of these. Interesting. Okay, I'm gonna keep my head up and uh, we're getting closer. We're getting closer, we're about 300 blocks out. There are road runners. Beep, beep. <laughs> I love these guys. Okay, I, I gotta keep going. I keep, we're almost there. Okay, there, there is another structure right here, and I do want to visit it. And see what is up about this. Oh, is this like a sarcophagus? Is this a tomb? This definitely looks like a tomb. Should I open it? Oh, it's like a dungeon. It's a dungeon. Wait, is this an entrance to a dungeon? It definitely looks like it. Ooh, this might be something worth exploring later on down the road. I mean, right now, I can kind of just dabble a little bit and see what it has to offer here. Ooh, okay. At least we can gather a little bit more string. I'm very early on, but... Aha! Uh -huh. Okay, oh, there's a spawner! We could probably just grab this spawner real quick. Um... That would probably be a good idea. We should definitely try and grab the spawner. Uh-oh. I have no idea what's going on right now. I don't know what was up with that, but there we go. Yes, a spawner. And we should get a spawner shard from this. Oh, that is perfect. This is uh, taking a wild turn here. Because I was not expecting to come down into here. Oh, there's... Okay, so there's some chests. Some redstone, gunpowder, some sand. I will take that. Ooh, some golden gloves. This gives us attack damage, so I definitely need to have these and equip them. There's supposedly, like, to be able to equip these, I thought there was a secondary tab, but I guess it just goes in your hand slots. I wonder if there's more to this. This is, re this right here is giving me, like, desert vibes. Oh, it definitely does. Oh, okay, so this might be where the real treasure is hidden. I've just got to treat this like normal and I got to ease my way down here because if this is trapped with TNT, oh, that will be trouble. Let's just see if we can get down here, break the, tr break this. That's important. Oh goodness. And break all of the TNT for sure. Oh, cause that could be bad. But I will take all of that TNT. I absolutely love it. And let's see. Let's make sure these aren't double trapped. Just knowing my luck. Okay. And perfect. So this is all loot we just got. Okay, that's fantastic. Let's hope this contains normal loot. Oh, it does. Oh, sweet. Okay, so spider eye. A dormant eye. That's interesting. What are you? Okay. Another young, another wanderer, another story to be told. 
I now observe yours with great curiosity. Okay, that's interesting. Gives us reach distance and plus one charm slot. Now that you have drawn his attention, whoever uses the eye to observe you and the world does not seem to need it in order to reach you. Whether he is incapable or simply unwilling to establish any contact beyond mental remains a mystery. That's so creepy. <laughs> but I'll take it. It's a free charm that gives us another charm slot and then also gives us plus three reach distance. We just got a magnet ring. Attracts items and blocks up to eight blocks can be disabled by holding shift. That is amazing. And then we got an old eye. Legend says this once belonged to some great. Oh, this is the end remastered. This is how we get to the end. We have to have all the uh, individual end eyes, I think. And we just got a scroll. Okay, a level one scroll from Iron Spells. I cannot wait to get into Iron Spells. We are missing chests though. So this doesn't contain like all of the normal chests. That is awesome. Okay. The fact that we just got a magnet is amazing. That is another one of the charms from the Ikmatic Legacy. And this goes into our ring slot. Oh, that's perfect. You know what? I'll call that a success. Well, what's not a success is that I got caught up and carried away and now it's nighttime. Uh, you should get to my horse. What in the world? Oh my God. Okay, we, we've got to go, buddy. We've got to go. We got to go. I didn't bring a bed. We've got to go. Oh, thank goodness I did bring a bed. I did. I, I brought a bed. Woo. That was... That was intense. Okay. I thought I was about to lose it all right there. This definitely looks like an ocean up ahead. I really want to explore this. If it's not full of pillagers, that is. And there's also a house in the water. <laughs> Which seems really absurd. But this right here, for sure. Okay. I mean, we might as well check out the underwater house. But this is perfect. We have a warm ocean right here. Okay, this, this has pillagers in it. Okay, I should probably disregard that. My sword is looking a little low on durability right now. What is that? Is this ice? Is there ice forming on the edge of an ocean? A stony shore. Okay. I should definitely hop up here. This might be a village. Yes, it is a village. Oh, perfect. So this is a, this is a happy village. Okay, good, 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 good. That is interesting. What are you though? Rosetta. Hello, Rosetta. It's hot here. Ooh, you offer tinted glass and amethyst. That's kind of cool. And then you also have an enchanted basin from Villagers Plus. Huh. That's kind of cool. Ooh, they didn't. They didn't like that. That's nether quartz. Okay, I'll take I'll take that. Are you guys mad at me now? Now they won't let me trade with him? Oh, I just made them all mad. Wait, so you can't open chests with the villager compass their comforts mod? So if you loot from them, you're then a bad guy. Ah. Okay, yeah, they shake their head at you. They do. They did not like that. Ooh, an iron spells and spellbook inscription table. Uh, yes, I will take that. So I don't have to worry about making it. Okay. This is like a western village. I kind of like it. I kind of like it. Let's see what else. I mean, I might as well. I've already disrupted. I've already disrupted. <laughs> I'm never, I'm never going to be liked by these guys again. What an interesting little village. Huh. But I've completely ruined them now. Well, on to more kelp, because that's, that's what I'm after. There's entire ships under the water. That is so cool looking. And because of our back tank, we should be able to explore some of these things. But like I said, first things first, though, I'm after kelp. I keep getting so distracted. Now that 
is a pyramid. Whoa. That thing is huge. And it's definitely something we're going to have to come back to eventually. That's so cool. There's a shark that was like keeping up with me. Look at him. Look, look, he's like, he's actually keeping up with the boat, which has me like concerned. He's a hammerhead shark. So like he shouldn't really bother me, but I do know like, like uh, sea animals, they really love to like uh, ride the wakes uh, that ship, ships uh, sort of push out. Yeah, this guy's kind of cool. Right? He's not going to bother me, right? But it looks like I found kelp. I'm pretty excited about that. Right? You're not going to attack me, are you? I'm sort of ready for him if he does. No. That should be a gentle giant. Okay, I do need to probably equip my magnet. That would actually help out a little bit. Um, so I have my magnet in here. And unfortunately, I have no toggle, so I'll just have to, like, turn it on and off as needed, but I only need a little bit of kelp to make a kelp farm. Oh, this thing right here looks kind of special. I'm just so concerned if I go down... Oh, yeah. If I go down under here, I'm probably going to be attacked. I have no idea what that is. I just don't feel like I am fully prepared enough to go against cataclysm mobs. That being a cataclysm mob right there. Oh, but it looks so tempting. Okay, no, let's just get back to the pace. Let's go pick our horse back up, and then we're gonna, we're gonna head back home and build ourselves a kelp farm. Now, on my way back to my horse, this up ahead looks ridiculous. Also, are you boop noodles? Are you, oh, they're rattlesnakes. No, 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 they're nope ropes. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, we'll stay away from them. Because they are 100% noping. Be careful not to make sure I walk on any of those snakes on accident. This village, though, is so jam-packed. I don't want to, like, mess with anything. But I can tell it looks like that, um... It looks like the iron golem that's in here is, like, already mad at me. Uh, there's, like, he's got red eyes. I'm assuming that means it is mad at me. Let's find out. If I get close to him... Yes, he comes after me. Why, though? What have I done? Is it because of the other village? I wonder how I go about making villagers not angry with me. Yeah, this is going to be... This will be a tough situation to figure out. Huh. I'll take my shoes off. We can definitely get the, uh, the iron golem out of here. Like, that's not a big deal. So I should be able to just chip away at him, right? And <laughs> Iron Golem just sinks to the ground. This is one way. I gotta be super careful because I can just probably get one one slap. This is level two. I wonder what the levels mean. But there we go. The Iron Golem is gone. I'm just wondering if I need, like, to be able to pick up villagers. Am I just not welcome here? <laughs> of course I'm not. This place is huge, though. This is a huge village. Yeah, so I think I'll just leave this place for now, just keeping in mind that it exists. And let's grab our horse and head back to the base. Ah, oh, welcome back. Time to head back, my man. Now that I'm back, we can actually craft some pretty awesome items. So, because we got that spawner shard, oh boy, we can actually use this to make a item that will allow me to pick up mobs. This is going to be pretty cool. So, I do need a, a couple of things that we farmed last episode, um, being this arcane crystal. And so, if I just turn this into a block, we can then make something very special. This is going to be a quantum catcher inside of a smithing table. The quantum catcher is pretty cool. It allows us to pick up mobs. We can pick up entities. I believe we can pick up our horse, right? And we can place our horse back down. Somehow, it also has the lead still attached to it. I really don't know how that actually works, but um, there's that. Any mob now, we should be able to pick up and bring back home, um, including villagers. So, check mark on that one. Oh, yeah. Let's do that. Boop. For right now, before I have an automated kelp farm, it'd probably be best if I just simply planted some. So, I actually have this big area down here that I can just plant a ton of kelp in. Um, and this is going to be very nice. It'll grow up, and then I can just simply harvest all of it. And uh, because we have our water breathing, 
I'm able to just come down here and grab this. Uh, it was just a hole that was already here. <laughs> so how convenient is that? Um, so I just place a bunch of kelp in. Unfortunately, the kelp texture is so large. It is really cool looking, but it is so large. It makes it really hard to see everything. I'm also going to take these off. But yeah, I should be able to just place kelp basically everywhere. <laughs> Look at that. Now, the reason kelp is so important is because it's what's going to allow us to actually make belts. Um, and we are going to need plenty of belts. And it does cost, I believe, six dried kelp to make a single belt. And one of the first things I want to use for the belts, well, first we're going to use a, uh, a depot, but I need to make a press. This is how you kind of get started with Create is by making a press. And then usually you can make a depot. That's probably one of the second easiest things to make uh, until you get yourself some belts. But I have some belts cooking, so I should be able to show both. So we just need one belt here, but there's also some other things that we're going to want to make. Uh, and those are called funnels. So whenever you use belts, funnels are going to be the fundamental way of sending items from one inventory to another. Um, and it's probably the simplest way to do it sort of like a hopper. Um, so base funnels are fantastic and we should be able to tap into our power here. So I now have my press connected to the same shaft that we have going here. And if I place myself a depot down below, we should be ready to start pressing metals and bonk, <laughs> just like that. And this is actually making sheets. Uh, sheets are going to be fundamental for getting started in this mod, and some of the first sheets that we really need is going to be gold. So with the gold ready to be pressed up, this should happen fairly quick because of the speed that we have going on this. And this gold is going to allow us to craft something special. A wrench. This is going to be integral to the Create mod and probably one of my most used tools because we can shift right click on blocks that are from the Create mod, and you can see they go right into your inventory which is going to be great, especially if you have belts, because you really don't want to drop items onto belts and break your belt lines. So now to show off the belts, I should be able to actually remove these, and I'm going to show something pretty interesting. Um, we're going to use an encased chain drive, and this is going to allow me to bring down um, our power. So I now have power up here, and I also have the same power down here. And this will allow me to set up a belt line. So if I place down a shaft here and here, and then one in the middle, this will actually allow rotation to our belt line through the middle. Um, so if I grab my belt, just like this, and I add that, we now have some kelp drive or a belt drive. Um, and then typically what I can do is I can go ahead and add a shaft. Let's go ahead and place our toolbox in here. I can add a shaft like right here as a support. You don't need this, but I'm going to place a barrel here and here if I can get the barrel to actually go in place, right here. Um, and then I will place my andesite funnels, and this is the basis of sending an item from one side to another. Um, so, now if we go ahead and put our mechanical press back in, and I put the items in this barrel, for example, iron, it will then get pressed on the belt and then end up in the other barrel. So now we have an input and an output. And keep in mind, back here, I can still recharge my back tank. Now, this is about as basic as it gets, but it is going to be integral to our progression because diving into Create Deeper, we are going to need to go to the Nether. We're going to need blaze burners that requires iron plates. We're going to need fans, which we can do before going to the Nether to auto smelt things using this rotational power. That needs plates as well. So this is going to be used quite a bit. Now, something I do want to show you is that, well, if you don't have all of this, you can still use the mechanical press. Uh, if you make the mechanical press before having all of this, and you, for example, place it right here, right? And you toss your iron on the ground, well, it can actually boink the items that are tossed on the ground. You just have to use a hand crank. And you'll see that it actually works on the ground as well. Just like that. So I think this has been a fantastic start and what an adventure today. Now there are still some quests that I want to go ahead and complete. There's some rewards for some of these things that we have done so far with the create mod. Oh, we get some experience out of this and we also get a shaft. It looks like some more andesite. All of these things are definitely nice. It wants me to have eight of the belts, um, which is fine. We'll definitely have that at some point. And then it goes down. We've already got our uh, encased chain drives, which are some of my favorite blocks in the create mod. And uh, yeah, we're getting some iron ingots back. Ooh, more andesite alloy. I'm always down for more andesite alloy. 
Now, um, we still have some more things to do that are pretty basic and integral to create. For example, getting a mixer going, that will allow us, even without a blaze burner, to actually get andesite alloy for a much cheaper price, requiring just one iron nugget and one andesite to make the same amount. Now to use that recipe and to use a mixer just in general, I've went ahead and extended my casings up here and then I just need to put a regular cog on the bottom. This is going to allow me to attach a mixer, but the mixer is going to go into this basin. So I, it's better to just place the basin down and then to place the mixer. And we can see that this is now spinning. This does require uh, you to have it spinning at a certain RPM. So it does need to be spinning rather fast in order for this to operate. But as you see right here, it should work. And the way we're gonna get ingredients into it is by using an andesite funnel. And we should be able to place a funnel onto the side of the basin. But the funnel's facing the wrong way. So if you right click this, we can see the arrow is now pointing into the basin. And that means I should be able to feed it items. So for example, I can feed it the andesite, just one and andesite uh, uh, alloy here. And that's going to allow me to make andesite for one to one. So I just place this here, that's gonna pull it in, place that there, and that pulls in. And then that should just empty out onto here, just like this. You can see the spout just sends the item directly out which is perfect. And this is just a very simple way of doing this because it's best to probably use belts and to also make sure you have items being fed in from both sides. But for this being so early on in the create mod, I think this is a pretty decent way of doing it. So I think that with that, this has been a pretty jam-packed episode. And I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, be sure to click that subscribe button if you haven't already and give this video a huge thumbs up as that really goes a long way. And also don't forget to comment down below what I should name my horse. I would really appreciate that. And I'll be selecting that within the next couple of episodes. So be on the lookout for that as well. With that, it is now time for me to thank the amazing supporter of today's episode. And that is going to be a huge thanks going out to Code Hammer. Thank you so much for your amazing support, by the way, and supporting this content that I make and choosing to support me over on Discord by becoming a Discord premium member. So be sure to check out the Discord. It's linked down in the description below. And guys, I will see you in the next one. And of course, as always, Thanks for watching. Bye.